Welcome everybody. Welcome. This is Coach Marjean and I am here today to bring you some positive mindset because as an online entrepreneur, I recognized early that there's a big difference between learning how to sell one-to-one -one over the phone virtually like this and through text and chat. It's a big difference. And my personal experience was I hated to have to sell. And I started out with selling vacuum cleaners, door to door. I hated door to door. I hated going out in the heat of the day, knocking on those doors, but I've done it all. And then I got into over the phones appointment setting. And I didn't really truly feel good about calling people and ask them about their window situation to get an appointment for someone to come and demonstrate windows to them. But I did the job. I made the appointment. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. I made those appointments and I continued on. And the more that I ended up having to do the selling, answering the phone, talking on the phone, the more I changed my mindset about it. And I think sometimes it is a mindset that needs to change. So I'm going to do a brief overview summary of this book, Guerrilla Sales, which is a short book. It's only 160 some pages long. If you get a chance, maybe you want to download the, the Kindle version if it's available or pick it up at the bookstore. It might be a great addition to your library of resources for your life and for your business. So I'm going to go ahead and do this presentation for you today about how to sell anything at any time, regardless of the apes in charge, which is the byline of Kurt Redden's book, Guerrilla Sales, because this book focuses on the key concepts. Pay attention, key concepts, the practical strategies to help your client learn how to get the sale, to help you learn how to get the sale, to help you learn how to make the sale, and to help you learn how to ask for the sale. So we are very excited to share insights from this powerful book, Guerrilla Sales by Kurt Redden. And this book is packed with practical strategies designed to help you master the art of selling, whether you're struggling to get the sale, whether you're struggling to make the sale, or whether you're struggling to ask for the sale. The principles in this book will guide you towards success. So let's dive in. So first of all, getting the sale starts with understanding your prospects and creating value for them. And I know when I'm working with my clients that I always have that conversation with them to help them to understand the first thing you must know is something about your prospect. And the next thing you must know is your product because Redden emphasizes the importance of doing research and preparation. And he gives us three key steps to doing that. Again, first of all, you must know your customer. You must understand their needs, their pain points, and what drives their decisions. We will use this information to tailor your approach, but you got to do the work. You got to think about your audience. Think about your perfect client. Think about that person, that avatar that we hear so much about is that person that needs what you have to offer because you have the solution. Maybe you are your own avatar. Maybe because you found a product that helped you with your problem and now you want to tell the world, well, go out and find more people that have the same problem that you had because you have the solution. The second step is you must build rapport. You have to establish a connection with your prospects. People buy from those they trust and like. You must use small talk to find common ground and build a relationship. Don't start your conversation with why you're in front of them or why you're reaching out to them. Talk to them. Treat them like a human being. Let them know you care about them because people don't care about you until they hear how much you care about them. Empathize with them. Connect with them on an emotional level. Let them know you hear what they're saying. Let them know you've experienced some of the things that they're going through right now. 
so that they will open up to you and they will look at whatever you have to say as important. The third step is you must present value. You must clearly communicate the benefits of your product or service. This is critical. You must know your product. You must know the service that you're offering and how it helps people because you have to focus on how your product helps your prospects find the solution to their problem. And again, I've always stated that we want to make sure that when they have a question about a specific piece of product that we're trying to get them to purchase, you better know about that product. And if not, make sure you tell them, I'm not quite sure how to answer your question, but I certainly will find out and get back to you. So Redding will also highlight the importance of positioning yourself as a trusted advisor rather than just a salesperson. This involves you demonstrating expertise and you providing valuable insights that will help your prospects. So the next section we're gonna talk about is making the sale. Making the sale is about effectively presenting your solution and overcoming objections. And Redden gives us four steps to that strategy. The first step is you must craft a compelling pitch. And I know in my experience throughout all the different direct sales companies that I've been involved with over the years was we have to practice our sales pitch. We have to know our product, number one. We have to be able to talk about the benefits of our product to the customer. And I remember one company that I used to sell for was a candle company. And I also remember that I had to speak to them about the benefits of having that candle provide a beautiful scent for their room or for their house or creating that ambiance for a specific emotional connection with the people that we might be standing in front of. Maybe it's a party or whatever. And we had to use storytelling to get our message across. I also remember uh, a company that I used to uh, sell for was a warmer company where you had a container that would melt the warmer, would melt the wax, which would scent your home. And I remember the stories that I had to tell about that because when I had the candle business, I used candles and I had a candle that was burning on a counter that is between my kitchen and my dining room. And it was just a small votive candle and I could smell something burning and I turned around and looked and here's a cat had jumped up on that that counter and was standing over the candle. And I bet you can about imagine what was going on. Well, I grabbed her quickly, put out the fire. She was not harmed. It was just her fur. That was the last time that I burned a real candle in my home in an area where an animal could get to it and was then able to tell that story with the company that had the wax warmers where now I don't burn candles, I burn wax and my home smells like Christmas all year round if that's the choice that I have. So you've got to be able to have that story to tell during your sales pitch. And then you want to use consolative selling. And I'll give you the definition of consolative because consolative selling is an approach that focuses on creating value and trust with the prospect and exploring the prospect prospect's needs before you offer a solution. So don't try to offer a solution to a prospect that doesn't even have that problem. That's silly. You got to make sure that what you're offering them will take care of the problem that they have. Because the salesperson's first objective in building a relationship is to make sure that you take more than one conversation that you have with that person to be able to get your point across to that person. And the second objective is providing the right product. You must ask open-ended questions to understand your prospect's needs and tailor your pitch accordingly. If you're not clear on what that means, let me provide you with a definition. An open-ended question elicits an answer that cannot be answered by a yes or no. Therefore, it requires more thought and more than a one-word answer. These questions usually begin with what, how, and why. So make sure you're using open-ended questions. 
as follow-ups for the other questions because they can be asked after the open and closed ended questions. And some examples are, how did you get involved with whatever the situation might be? What kind of challenges are you facing now or have you been facing or would you like to overcome? What's the most important priority to you at this time, I usually would like to say, or specifically to the situation? What could make this no longer a priority? In other words, you're kind of asking them, what do they think would be a solution? And then what other issues are important to you? You want to hear them, make sure you're listening. And when we talk about listening skills, we talk about eye contact, body language, and letting that prospect know that they have your full attention, even though you may be thinking of a rebuttal answer while you're sitting with them. The third step is overcoming objections. You want to be able to anticipate common object ob objections and prepare responses. And this is where your company that you're representing can help you. They should already have some training content available for you that will give you some ideas of objections that you could expect from that particular. And also, as you're practicing your sales pitch, hopefully you're with a team member where you're practicing. You can practice your sales pitch in front of the mirror. I suggest a full-length mirror because that way you can look at your body language when you're practicing your sales pitch. So you're looking at yourself as the prospect is listening to your sales pitch and also help you to be able to feel confident in what you want to say to that prospect. Don't wait till you get into in front of a prospect to practice. Make sure you're practicing so that you can practice overcoming objections. Ask a neighbor or a friend or a family member to sit with you and tell them that what you'd like for them to do is to give you a rough time, to not be the friend, not be the sister or the brother, not be the parent, not be the, the, the best friend, but to be the prospect and put on that hat and give them what they would maybe end up receiving from a prospect to challenge them. So when you're overcoming objections, you're going to address concerns and with confidence, and you want to provide evidence to back up your claims. So remember, objections are often a sign of I'm not interested, but not rejected, because that sounds like they are interested. It sounds like they're asking questions. It sounds like they want you to give them more information, but try not to give them more so much information that they become bored and disinterested. And then the fourth step is to demonstrate the value. So make sure you have case studies available to you. Make sure you have testimonials. If you don't have a personal testimonial about a specific product that you're trying to offer them, make sure you bring some ammunition of other users' testimonies. Because even though you may not be the expert in the product, you may not even have used the product, you can use others' testimonies about the product so that when you demonstrate your product, you're gonna show them how the product can deliver the solution that they're looking for or the service that that's, that uh, service will deliver that particular resolution for their problem. The more tangible and specific you can be, the better you're going to be. Now, Redden also advises focusing on the customer's buying journey. So you want to align your sales process with their decision-making process to make it easier for them to say yes. And we will walk about, we will talk about that in the next section. Again, you want to make sure that even if you walk away from this meeting with this person that didn't say no, that you do follow up with them. And we want to make sure that you understand that. So asking for the sale can be very intimidating, but it is critical. So Redden provides four key strategies. The first one is assume the close. So act as if, come in with the attitude that a decision to buy has already been made. Because this positive mindset can be contagious and influence your prospect. In other words, you may have had a decision about the product. The prospect has stayed with you as you've talked about it. Now is the time to assume they're ready to order or sign up. And there are some really good closing techniques that Redden offers. First of all, he says that an effective closing technique can be the assumption close, which involves saying something like, 
when would you like to get started? Or would you like to order one or two of those? Or the choice close offers a two position option like, would you prefer delivery on Monday or Tuesday? Or would you like to sign up for an ongoing subscription so you never run out of the product? Because you want to keep this customer coming back to you. You do not want to treat this prospect as a one-time sale to walk out the door to never be heard from again. Number three, you want to create a sense of urgency. So you want to encourage the prospect to act now by highlighting limited time offers or the benefits of the quick decision making. Maybe one of the limited time offers is if you sign up today, you can add this and this product to your order at a 50% discount. But this is the only time that this is offered so that you're giving them the opportunity to buy more products, add to the solution, and also not feel bad about being your customer when they find out that you didn't tell them about that option, but you heard it from a friend that referred you to them when they made their purchase and they came back and said, oh, I'm so happy you connected with me with John. And he even offered me to be able to do this. And I'm just so excited because you didn't offer it to that prospect. The word gets out. So you want to make sure that you are following through with your intentions. And the final step is number four, ask directly. Sometimes the simplest approach is the best approach. Just ask directly if they're ready to move forward. You know, after you feel comfortable with the conversations that you've had with this person, you're you're comfortable with the questions this person has asked and the answers that you've given them, just ask them. Phrases like, are you ready to make a decision? Can be very effective. But personally, I feel asking if they're ready to decide puts doubt in their mind. So I don't agree with what Redden says. I would suggest asking our next session is this date, can I register today? Or if you don't sign up today, the price is going up next week. Or would you like to sign up for a subscription so you don't run out of your products? So when you're asking for the sale, make sure you don't come over too strong. Now, Redden also emphasizes the importance of follow-up because if a prospect isn't ready to buy immediately, you need to follow up regularly to stay top of the mind and demonstrate your ongoing commitment to staying connected with them and to meet their needs. So in, conclu in conclusion, my takeaways are to wrap up with Guerrilla Sales by Kurt Redden, which provides a comprehensive guide to mastering the sales process. The first takeaway is get the sale, understand your customer, Build rapport and present value. Practice your script. Make sure that you're learning how to get the sale. Number two, make the sale. Craft a compelling pitch using consulta consultative selling. Overcome objections and demonstrate value. And the third is make sure you ask for the sale. Assume the close. Use effective closing techniques and create urgency and ask directly. By applying these strategies, you can become more confident and effective in your sales efforts. And remember, selling is about building relationships and providing solutions. Focus on your customer's needs and success will follow. So the final statement I'd like to make is, if you think about it, each and every one of us are a salesperson. As a child, we've tried and tried many times to sell our parents on something that we wanted to do they didn't want us to do. As a parent, you are selling to your children all the time about a trip or a movie or a bedtime. You have to sell that to them. You have to get them to agree. So change your attitude about selling and turn it into providing opportunities to others. And sometimes just changing that mindset will help you to feel better about asking for that sale, taking the sale, getting the sale, taking the money and serving that client. So I want to say thank you for joining me today. And if you have any questions or if you need any further assistance, 
please feel free to reach out to me. I am here to help you succeed, and I wish you a very blessed day. So bye for now. Coach MJ, Mwah. I hope to see you soon on the other side and look forward to serving you in this capacity as a positive mindset coach because positive mindset matters with Coach Marjorie. Bye for now.